So the second advantage of the gold standard is that, that it made it very difficult for governments to print money and to devalue their currency. So we're going to illustrate this with an example, but first I'm just going to clear some stuff out of here. Let's assume that country A over here uh, one day decides to start a war with another country, let's say country C. And they calculate that to um, successfully win this war, they need to create weapons and build an army, and the cost of the war, they estimate, will be cost of war, they estimate, will be 1,000 country A dollars, which is just happens to be equal to the money supply in the economy. Now, there are a couple of different ways the government can try to raise this money, but just say the government decides that it's going to print money to finance this war, meaning that the government just creates out of thin air a thousand country aid dollar notes and then just gives them to people and says, you know, please start building weapons and please start organizing an army and this money is basically what we'll give you in return for your services. So what will happen is that the money supply in the economy will now be equal to this original thousand country A dollars plus the new 1,000 country A dollars the government just printed. So the money supply will be equal to 2,000 country A dollars. Now the ratio of the money supply to gold will also change. And the ratio now will be, I can write it here, the ratio of the money supply to gold will be equal to the 2,000 country A dollars, are now the money supply, to the original amount of gold in the economy. This hasn't changed because the government can't create gold. So this will still be 100. And so this ratio is now 20 to 1. And you can see that the, ratio is, that the ratio has doubled from 10 to 1. And what you might imagine is that if you're a person sitting in country A, you might look at this all happening and think to yourself, wow, the government just has been printing all this money and has been devaluing the value of country A dollars. Because while before, each country A dollar was 10% backed by real gold, because this ratio was 10 to 1, so that means that 10% of each country A dollar had some real gold sitting in a vault somewhere. Now, the ratio is 20 to 1, which implies that only 5% of each country A dollar is backed by some gold. And, you know, this might make a lot of people very uncomfortable. And so what they might decide to do is they might think, well, it's much safer for me just to go to the bank and take my country A dollars and convert them to gold, and then I'll keep them in gold, and after the war, when this is all over, I'll, you know, I'll decide what to do then. And so it's not unreasonable that uh, people would start converting country A dollars to gold. And because there's now 2,000 country A dollars out in circulation in the economy, it wouldn't take many people going to the bank and exchanging their country A dollars for gold for them to deplete this 100 grams of gold that's actually sitting in the vault. In fact, if you do the math, only 5% of this 2,000 country A dollars in circulation, so only if 5% of that, which is equal to 5%, of 2,000 is equal to 100. If only 5% of the people who have the currency in the economy go to the bank and ask for their money back, they're going to completely deplete this 100 grams of gold. And if that happened, uh, that would be terrible for the economy and for the country because the government will no longer be able to credibly say that their currency was backed by gold because there's no gold left. And so because of this, this is the reason why the gold standard makes it very difficult for governments to print money. You can either be on the gold standard or you can print a whole bunch of money and then make the decision if people lose faith in your currency and start redeeming it for gold to go off the gold standard. And this is in fact what a lot of countries did when they had to declare war. You know, for instance, England during the Napoleonic Wars and, and during the First World War, the moment they declared war in the case of World War I on Germany, immediately afterwards they suspended the gold standard.
And, you know, what typically used to happen was after these countries would go through their war and would eventually, you know, win or lose it, they would try to restore the gold standard after that.